Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Today I'm going to be talking about Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantum Mania. I've done enough of these podcasts that everybody knows I'm a nerd. I love the superhero movies. I don't care what company. Although I'll, I'll give Marvel the credit of being the better of the bunch. Solid movies for the most part. Now I got through this movie thoroughly enjoying it. However, I will highlight a couple of points where it almost lost me and maybe a, uh, an area where I can agree with some things about superhero movies that can be a little tiresome, but this movie is pretty good in the sense of a movie being made without biases in it. You know, we all come to these things with that. It's directed by Peyton Reed and, of course, starring Paul Rudd, Evangeline Lilly, uh, you got Michelle Pfeiffer and uh, Michael Douglas. And I'm not sure who's playing the daughter, but she was pretty good in the movie. Um, Jonathan Majors as Kang was awesome. I really liked him, although I'll get to parts about the actual movie where I feel they might have, you know, fell short a little bit. And they got this uh, Catherine Newton as uh cassie now in the comics uh, i think she joins the new avengers like the young team and not the new avengers the young avengers i think and she becomes stature but it's a pleasant surprise uh, i liked her in the movie the family thing worked because this is going on the other movies that they made with ant-man and the wasp or even going back to the first one and it highlights um just how crazy his life is in a way because it's narrated while the welcome back Carter song is on and he's walking through the streets and it's it's got good humor in it and you go back to he's an ex-con who is an avenger and it's 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 uh witty and charming enough that you know paul rudd's good at what he does and it gravitates uh, the rest of the cast to him in that way where i think it works the daughter's really good actress. Uh, you know, we got Michelle Pfeiffer, Michael Douglas, Evangeline Lilly. It, it comes together, and again, this actor who plays Kang, great actor probably, uh, great performance in that way, but it's what they do with him, and I'll get to that. But movie-wise, I had fun, got to the end, music, uh, some intriguing cinematic uh, preferences, the way they shot things, and he always do that with the Ant-Man, even from the first one going down the water into the bathtub, but they got, you know, good ways of showing things and highlighting um, what this movie's about or what shrinking and growing is about. It, they do that great. Now, getting through the movie, having fun, and chalking it up is another pretty decent, solid Marvel movie does not mean it doesn't come with some, uh, you know, things that are a little, a little worrying in a sense. But for, let's just talk about this film in general. So it starts off and you are thrown into it kind of quickly, which is could be a good thing, a really good thing. You're getting the dynamics of the family. It's working. Um, intrigued with the daughter. Like I thought I would have been annoyed, but it worked. And then they're thrust into the quantum world again. And here's where they throw a lot at you really fast. And I think it's a little too much. Now, it doesn't ruin the movie, but it's a lot of stimulus thrown at you where they want to show you weird, fun concepts, uh, strange and unique elements of this quantum world. And it's a world within worlds within worlds is, you know broccoli people and you know uh blob creatures and it's trying to bring them to the point where you care about them because they're being conquered and there's a war going on it's a little too much there's a lot of action running and i think they dropped the ball with me getting right into care about them because they want to highlight one warrior woman and she'll be throughout the movie as the resistance fighter and as michelle pfeiffer says are you the terrorist or the whatever and there's a secret history with her which i didn't buy i mean going story-wise but it's the elements are there from the other movies and it still works cohesively just not my thing to do that type of uh 
you know, um, I didn't tell you everything and get to the fucking point. All right. You dragged out a little bit too much with that. What does she know? Who is she talking about? What's going on? And whatever. And, and again, it's carried by these people because they're just so good at what they do. Paul Rudd. I'm surprised at how much I love Michael Douglas in this movie. And again, it's Michael Douglas. I mean, you know his career and like how just by him being in it elevates it and then him doing a good performance elevates it even more. So it's working for me in that sense. And again, it's just that beginning of the movie, a lot of stimuli. I wanted to, to breathe a little bit more and settle in and start to really care about these people, people, things. Uh, Bill Murray fucking guest stars, you know, does his little thing in it. And it works for the most part. You've got the characters being separated, and that'll be a subplot. And Kang the Conqueror, one version of him, because he's a version of in the multiverse that was exiled by the other Kangs. So he kind of explains that the Kangs, versions of him throughout the multiverse, different divergent timelines, that whole thing. Uh, for the most part, they've all become so chaotic and crazy that they're fucking with the fabric of time. He tried to stop them in some sense, and they exiled him. Now, he's going to conquer all the world to get back his technology to go back and make them pay for exiling him. So, in that sense, you're brought into Michelle Pfeiffer, the Janet Van Dyne's original quest, or her 30 years of being stuck in the quantum verse, because... That was the whole thing with uh, Michael Douglas's Hank Pym. Janet got lost in the thing and for 30 years. You know, they finally found her. What was she doing? All that stuff. And it fills in the gaps. And except for a little bit of technique that I disagree with, it gives the movie, you know, the substance it needs to move on. Now, the elements they show at Kang are fucking great. I mean, I never thought I would see Kang on the screen. Remember, I'm a nerd. I'm immersed in this since I'm a child and I role play and I play all the superheroes and I make my own characters and it's just to see him done and done well was you know put a smile on my face but then again I'm the guy who loved She-Hulk show and it is that borderline between liking something irre irreverent and it really fits your style of like what you imagine it to be and you loving it, but it not, might not be such a great... I always use the Green Lantern movie. I watched that movie like fucking two dozen times. I have fun with it, but it's not a very good movie. It's just my example of, I can love a bad movie or something. But I don't think this is that. Solid movie. Now, when we get carried through the movie with like, like this, you know, you've got all these special effects. And they are really good at showing certain angles and the way things are moving and growing and shrinking they've nailed it in all the movies and here the only thing i think bothered me a little bit is like i said it's too much stimuli thrown at you so fast you know you're not only doing the growing shrinking aspect uh, you're doing it in a subatomic world which is already filled with zaniness and for the most part it works but these are little things that got me and my big eye roll kind of came where Kang is shown as this certain type of villain with certain abilities and what he can do. And you find out, plot reveal, spoiler, that in the past, uh, Janet Van Dyne, Michelle Pfeiffer, um, hid or, you know, did something to his power core where he can't escape and take vengeance on those who exiled him. So she takes his warp core and uh, puts a bunch of grow things on it or shrink things and it becomes this thing that Kang cannot get to and he needs a shrinker type person or something to get through. Now, they make a reveal about MODOK in this movie and I'm going to say right now it's a fucking crime they didn't use Patton Oswald. Fucking why? I don't know. You wanted to tie this into the first movie with Yellow Jacket, I get it, and it works. It was Modox hilarious in this, and um, it's so off-putting the way he looks, and it's carried over to the actors, and... But, Pat Oswalt should have been fucking Modoc. End of story. And that fucking annoyed me. He's perfect for it. He fucking... His head is... He is a Modoc. 
holy shit, how do you miss that opportunity? But they're going with the actor from the Ant-Man movie who became Yellow Jacket, became the villain. And that does carry through to his subplot storyline where he's working for Kang because they trapped him in the... And it just... It works for the most part, but I would have really loved Patton Oswalt in that character because he did the cartoon, if you didn't know. Or the cartoon, he fucking stop animation stuff, which was great. So, again, carry through to the movie, um, enjoying and actually surprised at some of the acting and the chemistry. It's working for me, which I thought it would have been a little too corny and zany. And, but it, it's working. The stimulus in the beginning, a little too much, a little overload. And when I'm really getting into it, they highlight Kang's abilities throughout the movie. And then when it really matters, because, you know, he's got to get close to his goal. So he gets his core back. He's getting his ship ready, his technology. And he's going to bring this conquering nation he created. Or, and he's going to go and fuck up all the other worlds. And look out. Giant Man is here. So Ant Man grows really big, really fucking big. And it seems to throw off King's plans and it made me roll my eyes like you did it really well with Loki. And I'm not saying to see actors uh you know who come out and bring out the uh elements that make a good movie or a good villain. Because this actor's great and it worked. I think it's the writing and, the, you know, what you're putting them in. The situation. So, Kang has displayed these abilities, this, uh, this, you know, passion and dedication to doing what he's got to do. And Giant Man gets, big Ant-Man, Giant Man is throwing off his plans and he's, they got to stop him. And I was really shocked in a way, like... You, you should have came up with something way smarter and, you know, more unique. That this should have been just a ruse because his daughter was really small and she's inside his ear. Or, like, something fucking crazy because it just became Giant Man's too big to stop. And uh, he, Kang, I'm supposed to be worried for Kang, and I kind of wasn't. And then they get to the, let's battle sort of portion where it's not just like giant man ends the movie where he stops the ship from getting away because there's lots of elements with the civil war type thing the daughter wants to help the people who live in quantum zone and whatever the fuck they're calling it and there's other elements too like modok and you know you've got michelle pfeiffer and hank and again i was surprised at how well it works and maybe me just geeking out because I love the actors and actresses and they're good at they, what they do. And it's just this part where Kang is threatened by a giant man that I didn't buy. You know, just like I almost didn't buy uh, Michelle Pfeiffer's secret history that they couldn't fucking get to quick enough. Again, these are the little things maybe add up for some people so I can maybe see an agreement with a trope of the formula they use and they're going to have a villain highlighted to a certain degree and then, you know, the floor drops out and no, oh, he's defeated. This could suffer from that. However, I think they've done enough things that are smart that could turn that around. Remember, you are dealing with different versions of Kang. And you're watching a fun movie and I think it might be geared more for kids which is fine um, you know and there is that story of uh, you know he's a father ex-con his daughter's now without his knowing wearing a suit and working with the fucking um, original Hank Pym and Michelle Pfeiffer and they're working on things that it just you know it works on that level where he's got a deal with, you know, people being gone for five years in a blip, or, you know, when Thanos snapped his fingers, what did he lose, and what has he got to lose now, and I'm gonna admit, I really miss his three amigos, like, the, the, the guys who helped him in the first movie, you know, for the most part, or, like, the cast that, um, really grew on me, and I think they were missing here, because there's a portion where he's highlighting, or he's narrating, and 
he gets to the part about friends, and I thought they would have a cameo with them. Like, I don't know why they weren't in this. It was, it was something I noticed that I really wanted at that moment. I'm not saying you needed the fucking three amigos, you know, in, in their fucking car running through the quantum zone, because I could see that happening, you know, fucking their cars there, and they're driving up and side down loops, and it just could have got crazy, but they weren't in here, and I'm going to say that's a little knockoff. You know, uh, the column because it just you and you're they're endearing and you fell in love with them in that sense and the camaraderie they had. So, I'm gonna say that's a missing element here again. I'm talking about Ant Man and the Wasp, Quantum Media, Marvel superhero movie, which right from the get go, I never thought would work in that sense. When I thought about it, them doing the Ant-Man movie back in the day when it first started, it was always Hank Pym, and they would do a Hank Pym trilogy, and he would pass the torch to a Scott Lang. But no, they just did what they wanted to do, and it worked. I was so surprised at how good the first movie was, how charming I thought it was, the you know the, graph, the special effects they used, you know, the ingenuity and showing size, scale, and stuff. It works. And... That that doesn't get uh, diminished in any way with with this movie. It really is just this. It's an overload at times. That's all. It's just you know we're going to show you this magical realm with living beings in it. Some are broccoli, some are Jello fucking molds, and you get to this point where there's a lot happening with a lot of elements, and those. Sub elements kind of aren't superb, but like I said, when you're watching a movie about this family going through things that the other movies have highlighted, um, his amazement that he was an ex-con and he's fighting alongside Captain America, not fighting with him, against him, and it, it's got so much charm in it with the family element and just the wonder of. You know, growing and shrinking and what that can do for a character and trying to teach those elements to his daughter. It works and it, I found myself, you know, at the end of the movie smiling and happy I watched the movie. And that's the point. But I'm going to agree with certain things about the villain. Um, now that could change because you could make Kang the end arc villain like a Thanos, without a doubt. You can pull that off in, in certain aspects. But... You're watching a fun movie just to escape, and I think this is a good movie for that. Popcorn, you know, whatever, goobers. You're going to come through enjoying it, and you might have a sensory overload at the beginning. You might roll your eyes that Kang is really worried about a giant man. And, you know, because his capabilities are just so threatening, and he looks so fucking good at times. And... I thought they were gonna see. I thought they were gonna go. We were watching different aspects of him. That at any time he appeared, he wasn't the exact Kang he thought he was. And there's a reason for this too. There's a all right. There's a moment in the movie where, uh, so like I said, they're separated plot wise, and you know, with the daughter and the fucking Hank and the father and J Michelle Pfeiffer and Scott Lang, Ant Man to save his daughter is going to do what Kang wants him to do. He has to get into this fucking thing and resize the core so he can get the fuck out and make people pay for what they did to him. Now, as that's going on, you got to, they're separated from the other, and there's another plot going on. And it's not that it's so difficult to, you know, navigate, but Ant-Man's got to do this thing, and in succeeding, you're giving Kang what he wants. You know, he's going to get away. It's a little um, unwieldy at times, but you do care. Like, I found myself, like, enjoying the daughter. And it, it all it, it coming together in a way where you're going to be satisfied in a movie like this. Uh, again, this is just fun popcorn movie. It is elevated. It's not a trash movie that someone had to piece together and save. You know, like some of DC movies are like that, where you know it's a mess. Even Marvel movies, like the fucking Fantastic Four disaster, 
Because I like the original with Jesse Alba. I like those two movies. Again, I'll watch them a dozen times, but I won't argue how critically acclaimed good they are. But just, I like it. And getting to this now, wrapping this up, so to speak, there are elements I can agree with about people seeing the tropes of movies and you're going to get this villain and you almost know where in the movie it'll go wrong, that type thing. And again, I don't think it's the actor's fault. I think it's just, you know, Marvel's got this formula and sometimes they do go out of the box. I mean, you've got movies that, just for the fact that I like getting into some crazy shit, I'll watch the Doctor Strange movie and that movie's formula is a little different. So they, they are doing it. But you remember, you got Marvel's 30 fucking movies or whatever it is. 15, 20 years, whatever the fucking time is, I'm going to give credit in that way that although you might hit certain formulas and I might roll my eyes here and there, I think at the end you had fun and you enjoyed yourself in the movie. What they tried to do with the family kind of works for me. The comedy, you know, could have gone a little bit here and there, different ways. The villain, superb. But they dropped the ball a little bit with how they're going to end it with him. I think that was a little anticlimactic. But, again, at the end, I'm not going to tout this as a critically acclaimed movie. But did I enjoy it? Did I get through it? Did I have fun? Yes. A couple of times I'm going to, you know, be drawn out because these are elements that I notice. And balancing out what I would have done you know in my head I'm the uh, I'm the script writer and I'm gonna you know dictate where my thoughts are gonna go with the movie and they're gonna either you know go along with me or not and I guess that is like with anything again I gotta give the cast credit um ingenuity with the visual effects because you know you can get a little overload and it did for me at times I admitted that I think they really should have um let it breathe a little bit. Get a little bit more, you know, um, grounding in the world they're in. Because it's crazy. It is it is crazy. You're in a, so, and Marvel has done this most, I don't say most, whatever. DC, Marvel, they all have their quantum universe type subatomic world. And in DC, they even use it to be a multiversal, uh, you know, pathway. Marvel has done things like that to a certain extent. You got the negative zone, and there's um, little Easter eggs of like elements they've used from those. Cause I think back in the day it was like the Micronauts. Some fucking. Cause I had all the dolls and the toys. They were fucking amazing. The Micronauts. They were awesome. Anyway, I'm looking at Ant Man the Wasp Quantum Media as a fun movie that I enjoyed watching. But. There are little elements in there that need to be addressed. It's a sensory overload in the beginning, but you know what? I could be just getting old. I am. And um, just uh, the way people talk about the trends of hero movies dying, and they've been saying that for years now. I don't think so. But what you do tend to see is the things that make you roll your eyes, and like, this is what they're doing again, or this is their formula. And I think they change it up enough that it's never going to be a woe type situation where there's a fucking downfall for Marvel in a sense anyway. We can get into DC and what's going on there, but I'm looking at, I said this before, I think a really amazing streak of decent good movies. And these are superhero movies. Again, let's get into a little bit of nitty-gritty and a little nitpicks in here. We're still going to get through. I'm still going to carry out at the end, talking with my friends, smiling, enjoying what we liked about the movie, and then what we rolled our eyes at. But I think that's just part of the movie experience. I mean, how many movies are put out every year? Well, pandemic-wise, we can get into movie theater and people in the seats, but I watch a lot of stuff. I get... 
you know, that dilemma of am I being too much of a critic? Am I thinking too much of a writer? But I think a movie like this is saying, fuck it. You know what's going on from the other movies in any aspect. You're okay. You know, if you came into this blind with no other superhero movie, I think it does a fine enough job to say, hey, we shrunk into a subatomic universe and you'll be carried along because uh, the chemistry and the plot's pretty much, you know, laid out for you. And if you are pieced together with the rest of the greater Marvel universe, there are aspects of this that are intriguing for further stories. You can branch this off of their ideas with the incursions and uh, not elements I super, you know, were into with the comics because I sort of stopped collecting in 2008 to 2012. But 2008 is when I went in and cut all my comics. Like, so I had a list, right? You know, that those days for years. I'm going to give this movie a thumbs up. I really enjoyed it to that extent. I'm not going to lie and say there weren't elements in here that drew me out. So to go over that one more time would just be the overload of stimulus in the beginning. The, uh, you know, should have breathed a little bit more so I can get really attached to the people they're fighting for. And then the Kang, uh, big giant man's interrupting my plans was a little, but I get, you know, look, this guy's 100 feet tall, whatever the fuck he is. And the mode acting was great. Should have Pat Oswald. It's a fucking crime. He fucking nailed it with that stop animation stuff they did. Marvel, you should check it out. Marvel's Modoc or whatever. It was fucking amazing. Amazing. So good that I'm pissed off that they didn't use him. And what they did in here was fine. Anyway, this is one of those movies, you know. I'm not really super eager to watch or to get to. And again, it happened with the first one, Ant-Man. Like, I don't know. I'm a fan in this sense, but more of Hank Pym as Giant Man. And I'm pleasantly surprised coming out of these movies. And a lot of Marvel movies, I get that feeling from. And by the way, even when people have friends who like love movie made, they shake their head at my, you know, my thoughts on the podcast. But it's more like just getting deep into what I think the movie did for me and what it might appeal to audiences but for a lot of people these little nitpicks it's just nothing i you know go along for a ride you had fun experience you know we didn't look at each other and go what the fuck was that because there were times like we watched the joker movie and we both like didn't really enjoy it but you you can find aspects and you know why people loved it and it's, I guess it's that balance. In any case, Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantumania. I enjoyed the movie, got through it. I have a couple of nitpicks, a little worry about the sensory overload in the beginning, the, the weight of the world they're in, and I'm supposed to care a lot. But again, you know, these actors and actresses really surprised me. I really thought I was going to be annoyed with this daughter stuff, but... I you know, I found myself really into it and charmed by the interactions they had. And yeah, they're going to separate people in the plot and make them come back together. And in that ride, the threat of Kang is really uh, scary at times. And then, again, Big Ant-Man. But when it ends, and I'm smiling and getting through a good experience, enjoying a superhero movie that I'm geeking out on, and... Quantum being in the name, I have a character called Quantum, and my friend's character was a phoenix for a time, and phoenix is fucking everywhere, so I gotta get some, you know, recognition. So, Quantum's in the title, and hey, it's a superhero movie, have fun, enjoy it, I did, and I guess we'll leave that here. Hope everybody's doing well, my best to you and yours, take care.